Welcome to the SolidCam Professor video series called Jumpstart, the easy way to get started with SolidCam. In this video, we will go through part two of our first lesson, where we will add a face milling operation to our cam part, run through the operation dialog, and simulate our toolpath. We will continue using the same cam part that we've just created in part one of our first video. Let's begin by adding a face milling operation to remove the excess material on top of this part. Right click on the folder called Operations in the Solid Cam Manager. When the drop down appears, mouse over Add Milling Operation. We'll be presented with a list of operations we can add to our part. Let's select Face. Now, our face milling operation dialog appears and shows the workflow in Solid Cam. As we move on through our lesson, we'll notice that almost all of our operations follow this same type of workflow. In the operation dialog and moving down the tree, we'll first define our geometry, followed by creating a tool, choosing the milling levels, selecting the type of technology to use, and finally choosing how to lead in and out of the cut in the link branch. Working in order, let's define our geometry. First, click on the New button. We have several ways to choose our geometry around the part. Our geometry is the boundary that controls where our toolpath will be created. Now since we've set our model as the target, we can leave the default option of model in the type section. Under the base geometry section, we can select our target geometry from this drop down menu. This selection will automatically create a boundary around the outside of the part and that's exactly where we want our toolpath to work. Let's click OK to accept the selection. Next, we will define a tool suitable for face milling by clicking on the tool branch. Since we have yet to create a tool, I will show you how to build one. Let's click Select to bring up the tool table. Then select the Add Milling Tool button on the bottom left of the dialog. For this operation, we will select Face Mill as our tool type from the list. The next dialog box we encounter has quite a few options, but we are only going to focus on two of the tabs for right now, Topology and Tool Data. Tool Topology allows us control over the physical dimensions of the tool. As you can see on the left, we can easily switch between metric and standard units of measurement when entering tool values. Let's leave the default units millimeters, for this particular operation, we'll enter a value of 100 millimeters in the diameter field. We can also set corner radius, arbor diameter, total length, outside holder length, and cutting length. For this example, we'll leave the remaining default tool parameters. Next, we will switch to the Tool Data tab. Here, we can control our feeds and speeds. We'll use the default values, which give us a feed XY of 100 millimeters per minute and a feed Z of 33 millimeters per minute. Our spin rate will be 1000 RPMs in a clockwise direction. Now, we can press select to accept our tool definition. Looking at our workflow, next on the tree is the levels branch. First up is clearance level, whose value is pulled from our coordinate system settings. Next is safety distance, which is pulled from the MAC file of our post processor. Then we'll move on to our milling levels. Upper level will be the top of our stock in this case. We'll click on upper level and select the top corner of our stock box in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area. Then click OK to accept. Next we'll select face depth, which represents the surface we want to machine to. Simply click on the top face of our target model and then click OK to accept the selection. Notice that the milling levels fields have changed to red. This is because the values are associative to the picked entities, and if the model changes, these associative values will also change. That completes the setting of our levels. Let's now move on to the technology branch. We have several technologies to choose from, which are chosen by this drop-down menu. When selecting the desired strategy, You'll notice the technology appears on a separate tab for a more structured placement of parameters. We have our hatch option, which is pictured here giving us a back and forth toolpath and stepping over until our entire surface is machined. Our second option is contour, 
which drives around our chain and stepping from the outside in until it machines our surface, as shown by the picture. The third option is one pass. Because our tool is wider than our part, we can machine the entire face in only one pass. Our last and most rarely used option is auto, which is used for complex face geometry where there are many pockets in the part. This option would allow us to face only the top of the walls and it creates a shortest distance toolpath on such complex faces. For this example, we will use one pass. Let's switch back to the technology tab for a moment. We also have the option of taking a finish pass by adding a value to our floor offset field and checking the finish box. For this example, we will not add a finish pass. Lastly, and moving down the tree, let's switch to the link branch. Having selected our one pass strategy in technology, we only have two options for lead in and lead out. They are none and tangent. None simply means that the tool will not be leading into or out of the cut. By selecting tangent, we can lead into and out of the cut through these values set by us, the user. If we would like to keep our lead out the same as our lead in, we can check the same as lead in box and it will set the lead out equal to the lead in. For this particular operation, we will choose none for our lead in and lead out. Now, we can click save and calculate to add this face milling operation to the cam tree and calculate the toolpath. At this point, since our operation has been calculated, we want to take a look at our toolpath at work. By clicking on the simulate button, our simulation control panel will open in a new window. We have several different modes to present our toolpath, handled by these tabs. The default simulation mode is HostCAD, and that is the mode we'll start with. HostCAD displays our toolpath as a wire frame. Additionally, by selecting the Show Tool 2D option, our tool will be represented during simulation as a wireframe circle. Let's also select the Show Tool 3D option, which is a new feature offered by SolidCam. The tool will be shown in 3D in the SolidWorks graphics area when running HostCAD simulation. If we select the Show Data option, our simulation data window appears and displays the X, Y, and Z position of our tool, the current feed rate, and the time it takes to machine this operation. To start the toolpath simulation, we can simply press the play button. As you can see, the simulation went very quickly. We can control the simulation speed with this slider. Moving it to the left will slow the simulation down, and moving it back to the right will speed the simulation up. When we run it again, we can now see the simulation runs at a slower pace. We have another playback option called Single Step Mode. Each mouse click will move the tool through simulation one step at a time. And we can even watch these movements in our Simulation Data dialog box. The final simulation mode we will use is Solid Verify. This is different from HostCAD because it enables us to actually see the material removal. And we can now view our cutting tool in 3D. As we single step through the simulation in this mode, we can view our cutting tool approach our stock, move across the face of our part, and retract away all in real time. To exit the simulation, click on the eject button on the bottom right of our simulation control panel. This action will take us back to our operation dialog, which we will also exit. And this concludes part two of our first lesson in the Solid Cam Jumpstart series, where we've added a face milling operation to our cam part, ran through the operation dialog and simulated our toolpath. Thanks again for watching. Please join us for part three of our first lesson where we will add a profile operation to our cam part, again go through the operation dialog and simulate our toolpath.